Everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got another video for you on the Black Moon. If you're new to this build series, this is the car that was actually used in the movie Black Moon Rising with Tommy Lee Jones. So we are bringing this one back to life after sitting for 37 years. So last time we started disassembling the car and restoring some of the movie magic. So if you're also new to the channel, we do things like this all the time. We restore cars, but we also make them electric. So there's this Porsche here, 1977 Targa. Got a Jeep Grand Cherokee from 2006, a Toyota pickup from 1987, and this one's gonna be a dual motor Nissan 300ZX. So make sure to subscribe so you can follow all the builds. When this one first came to my shop, um, it was not even rolling. So one of the front calipers was kind of seized closed, so they actually had to take that one completely off just in order for it to roll. Similarly, the suspension was uh, a little wonky. It was kind of sitting a little askew. So the whole car looks like it's just shifted. And you can definitely see there's more room between that bump stop and that bump stop right there. This one did originally have some air suspension and uh, some of those cylinders weren't working or leaking or seized as well. So today we're going to be working on brakes and suspension. Yep, so original wheels coming off. So the rear had the drum brakes, the front actually had disc brakes, and the caliper fits so closely that it actually ground on the wheel see there as well. All right, so this is the front wheel, and you see how close, basically I can just barely get a finger in there, how close the original discs were. And when these were on, they would actually be kind of touching the rim or very, very close to the rim. And this was a 13? Yeah. So this is a 13 inch rim. And in order to kind of get the stopping power we need or that we would like, we really need to upsize from this, uh, get bigger calipers, bigger rotors, all that stuff. Okay guys, so we got our air suspension components for the Black Moon. Right now we have it all laid out. We have our front shocks, the rear shocks, rear bags, and all the components that they need. Um, it looks like we also have our brake kit that we bought. We have some new bearings, uh, discs, hubs, calipers, things like that. So we're gonna get it on the Black Moon and uh, see how it goes. So we got our new bearings greased. They're set in there. The new seals are on there. And there's the outside bearing. Got them all packed up. Spin it around. So this has a race on there, kind of a flat spot to push on that washer. Tighten this up enough. You can wiggle this washer up and down, side to side, and barely move it. So that should be pretty close. You can barely do that. So we're probably a little on the tight side. Click. All right, so we got lots of new components here for the Black Moon, which is also the flying space car is what it looks like now. But Russ has been working on that happens. So Russ has been working on getting this stuff all sorted out. So we're changing this torsion front suspension to a air suspension in the front. So the, the factory suspension has a torsion beam here and here, and they're secured in the center, and then on the outside, on these arms, these yeah, control so this arms. Is, this was like the original torsion stuff, right. right? This is the torsion bar right there, and that's another torsion set. It's basically just a stack of steel. So we remove that, and this just gets a rod to retain these, these control arms in these little bearings there. So then it can move up and down is the idea, right? So this new setup has an air spring here. And when you put air into this, that port, it will fill up this air spring and it will push down on the suspension. So this car is gonna have air ride, is that correct? Yeah, so we're doing airlift performance. It's a three piece setup. You basically set the pressure that the suspension needs to be at for ride height. So you get in, just turn the car on, the car will automatically go to level. I don't wanna have to think about it. The customer should just be able to get in and turn right. the car on, so. And then the rear's getting something similar? It had the factory drum brakes and we we're doing a disc brake conversion. A couple parts are changed and then it has a rear torsion bar from the factory suspension, we're changing that also to an air spring. So we have an air perch, or like a perch for the airbag, uh, upper and lower, and same thing, airlines and shocks. So that's what it currently looks like, and we will be uh, making it look a lot better.
All right, so now we've got these new front hubs on and rotors. The original car, again, this is probably because it was sitting low, but you see some rub marks there from the tire as well as up there. So because we're going with uh, slightly larger rotors and calipers, we need new rims. Um, this is not necessarily the design we're doing, but this was one that we could print, 3D print, to make sure we kind of had clearance everywhere. So when this one goes all the way around. So we got clearance of the calipers, clearance everywhere. We'll probably go with very similar tire size. Um, and again, so this one, we should probably be okay as long as we're not uh, full droop, um, but we can always adjust if we need to. All right, today's sponsor, we've got Wild Badger. This is an electric lawnmower. Grass catcher, feels like batteries. All right, so some assembly is required. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put it together and put it to use. This is the Wild Badger 40 volt brushless lawnmower. This one has a 14 inch cutting deck. The brushless motor spins up to 3,800 RPM. Comes with this 40 volt battery and the battery charger. This is a really cool feature here, but basically this one lever will raise the entire deck. It has five cut depths and it has a 30 minute running time. And then we've got, this is the battery compartment. It's got three different ways to cut the grass. One is mulch, one is the rear discharge, and the other is collecting. I think one of my favorite features is just that it's quiet. And it's very, very quiet. It's always ready, you don't have to worry about gas, winterizing. And again, I cannot stress enough how quiet it is. It is nice for neighbors as well as your own household. All right, so we mowed this lawn kind of in mulch mode and it's pretty wet, so it powers right through. So we got a little section left, it's pretty thick. We're gonna go ahead and put the bag on and show you the bag feature, just like that. All right, one last thing if you wanna do the bagging, this actually comes out. So this one is for mulch, now we can do bagging. Now we're gonna do a thick test. Again, it's nice wet grass right here. And then when we are done, you can kind of peek in there to see the grass that it's captured. Just one step out. Very nice, you can just toss all that away. All right, so this is after we've mowed the whole yard. We're down to one bar. To take it out, and let's go charge it. So to charge it, just plug it into a wall outlet. Just put this one on to charge. Nice satisfying click, and it gives you the status right there. So green blinking means it is charging. When it's all the way green, it will be fully charged. So again, it mows really well. It's great for small yards. If you're interested in electrifying your yard equipment, I'll leave a link in the video description below. All right, so we're working on the new suspension for the Black Moon. So we've done a good job cleaning up some of our uh, old hardware. We have our torsion bar covers and the mounts for all of that. And then we also have to mount our rear airbags. So they've come with this little puck looking thing right here for the bottom mount. And then for the upper mount, they had us weld in this bar and that just welds into the existing shock mounts kind of next to the bump stop. So we have our shocks in and then we also got this upper mount here on the left side. So he sits nicely right there. What we have to do is we have to trim out all this material. You can see here I've marked how far we have to cut down. So we just got done cutting this. This was kind of a bear to get through, but this, it was thin enough that it was easy to cut. So we're gonna mock up the airbag here and see how it fits. We got that in, the lower mount sits on, and as this compresses, you watch it kinda flatten out so you can see you have your air fitting there on the top and then you just weld this guy into the trailing arm and make sure that it uh, has enough room that it doesn't cut into the airbag that should work well it was cut to about here so the bag was sitting higher we actually cut more of this out and this one you can see is already tacked in place um, we've got some supports in there it's hard to see but it's just a thick tube that we cut in half and then um, we just welded that in. So 
We put some steel in there to help prevent some rust. So now we're working on this side. So if you see here, this is our lower puck. We have our stud welded right there in the middle. And this just threads on to the bag like so. Like so. Just kind of wiggle it in. Okay, there's one. Our second bolt. Okay. Oh, dropped the wash. We got that one in. And then we want to check our angle with our angle finder here. Make sure this is at full droop. So we got 10.15 degrees. So this one is at 10.3. So let's see if we can match that up. 10.3 right there. Okay, perfect. So once that is in place, we are now going to tack it. Right. No, I don't want to do that. You ground it right there. So we got that all tacked in place. We're gonna pull it off. Make sure that we get some steel it in the places we won't be able to reach. And then uh, we're gonna fully weld it. Pull it out. Pull this down. In our bag. Looks good. We didn't over penetrate the lower puck and get into this. So that's great. There is one bolt right here at the pivot that holds this trailing arm. There we go. So we got our trailing arm and our specialty bolt. But now with this off, we can uh, coat the inside, make sure it doesn't rust, and then we can fully weld around our tack. Could be better. Could be a lot better but it'll work. I feel like this paint booth is not EPA certified or legit. It's a legit paint booth. Alright, so here are the rear trailing arms that are all welded up and painted. So we're going to go get those installed, be that much closer. Ooh, high as a kite. Red leader, red leader. Bogies, 5 o'clock. Ooh, I'm a talking monkey now. That's pretty all right. Okay, so how do we get this all pushed down? I bet you I could push it down and then tape over it. Man, that actually kind of worked. Yeah. That's fine. Okay, so we're getting ready to finish up the rear suspension, all of the drivetrain components. So we gotta do the bearings and the hubs. What we're gonna do is because we sandblasted these components, you can see there's some gunk in there. So we're gonna start by uh, cleaning this out so we can get the bearings in there. And then we can get the hubs on. Open your soul. 
So we were looking for the bearings all over the shop. Took us how long? Maybe like an hour. We found the bearings and apparently somebody put them in the freezer. It was me. It was him. That's okay. We got our bearings. I wanted ice cream. So we'll be able to slide them in. Does this go this way? I mean, all the holes line up, but I don't know. Are you using dead reckoning? Oh, did you look at your diagram? And then the axle goes. Stop. No, don't do that. Don't do that. That right there is electric supercar grease. It's blue. It's our own brand. It's our own. It's our own brand for sure. We've got our spline in place. So we packed in the rear bearing. You can see this one's being pressed in. So we got that rear bearing in with the circlip or the uh, snap ring, if you want to call it, and then a seal. And then we put in the inner race for the outer bearing, that guy right there. And then there's also a little spacer uh, that goes between the two to keep pressure off of, um, or horizontal pressure off the inner, inner race. So we just gotta do another seal. This guy, he will go in there and then we can uh, put the hub on and it just slides onto those splines. So we got the new suspension, new rotors, new brakes, everything's set for this car that brings us one step closer. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.